welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today I'm steering a little bit away from my usual content regarding 3D printing and mold making. And I wanna share a new product that I received and it is the We Create 40 Watt Laser. I'm very much excited to show you this product because this is definitely something I plan on using with my pottery and ceramics to give it a really customized feel. And I'm really excited to learn how to use this and integrate this into the channel. I already had the pleasure of unboxing this product it didn't take long at all about 15 20 minutes because i read the instructions also set up the fume extractor i wanted to do that quickly just so i could focus on all the nitty-gritty information in the video in terms of unboxing it was super easy there was no building or putting anything together everything was set up it was mainly just the calibration to ensure that everything was leveled everything was ready to go and then running your test i have a few items over here that i'm also going to be showing you guys so the first one is a little sketchbook that I have. This is like a rubbery top to the notebook. So I want to engrave that, put something nice on it, as well as a cutting board. It's, it's actually a bamboo serving paddle. So we're gonna put some interesting designs on it, test it out. By the end of this video or series, if you find that you're interested in this product, I have a coupon code for $100 off. So check that out in the description. I would say this product is mainly catered towards makers, creators, small businesses, and anyone who wants high precision, high detail items that are engraved or cut. I could see this being a very useful item in my collection. To be quite honest, I had a laser before, but it was part of the three-in-one in the Snapmaker and it was not powerful at all. It was only a two watt. It served its purpose at the time, but I'm definitely ready to step it up, try something new, more powerful. Uh, aside from pottery and some personalized gifts, I really want to test this out, cutting architectural models that I make in AutoCAD. And I will also be showing you that process in the future, basically taking your AutoCAD file, converting that to an SVG and making a cut from that. So. Ooh, hopefully when I get back to school, I'll be able to use this to get a couple A's in my subjects. So I'm very excited about that. One of my first tests using this machine was actually doing this lion and lamb engrave. And I was so surprised to see how powerful and how accurate this engraving was, as well as the depth of the actual engraving. So I can see someone who's interested in engravings on wood or even like something like the notebook that I have, creating a piece that has dimension and is not just on the surface. I'm gonna run a few more tests to see how different images look but this is absolutely beautiful this is another product that i made which is a little wooden holder for all my pottery tools and it turned out so beautifully it was just five cuts on a piece of wood three millimeter plywood i believe and it turned out really wonderful i love the very rustic look that it has to it and it's been very helpful for me and i love it i was able to make something like this within 10 minutes, super fast, super nice. All right, and now we're gonna reveal the laser. I'm gonna move this giant box. This laser is compatible with Lightburn as well as their own We Create Make It app. It has over 200 free projects. So if you're looking to get started, there's definitely a lot on there to practice with. There's also quite a few premium files that you can get, but you do require a membership. So I wanna run through the key features of this machine and then really show you a visual of how it works. Firstly, it has a very powerful 40 watt diode laser. It cuts through thicker material very efficiently and very quickly. And it's perfect for small businesses and creators. And it engraves at 600 millimeters per second. Reducing project time, if you have a lot of orders on the go, you wanna get things done quick, like chop chop. The third feature is the auto lifting. So when you put an item on the actual bottom plate, you can auto focus it, which will allow the camera to determine the thickness of the item just by the calibration process, or you can measure it out yourself and determine it that way. For me, I've used both. I love both, but I use them for different reasons primarily. So for one test, I use a pottery piece of a heart that I hand built. And unfortunately, just because of human error, it wasn't completely flush. So with the autofocus, it was able to come down and determine the height of the center point. 
but on the edges, they were higher up. It did scare me at first because it just measured that center height, but it didn't take into consideration that the perimeter of the object was higher up. So when it did go back to its home position, it did start dragging my plate, which scared me a lot because I didn't want to ruin the machine. So just keep that in mind when you do autofocus that it does just measure one point on your item. And if there's varying heights, you want to take a measurement of the highest part of your item that you are engraving just so you don't get the laser knocking into your item, potentially damaging the item that you have or the laser itself. The autofocus is also so helpful for flat items because it is quick and easy and you're able to get that done within 10 seconds and start your project. It adjusts for different material thicknesses and it has a quite a high accuracy at doing so. I don't always love to leave it up to technology because sometimes there are errors, but this has been proved to work time and time again. You just have to keep into consideration varying heights on your item. The fourth highlight is that it has rotary capability, so you can attach a rotary tool, which I will be reviewing that in the next video. The next feature is the deep engraving effect, and that is what I shared previously with the lion and the lamb. That depth and dimension that the engraves provide is something that I personally haven't seen before, but I haven't tinkered much with lasers, but I really love how you can get that very high quality image. Another key feature is the material versatility. You can use so many different materials. They do have it listed in their website from wood to rubber to acrylic to ceramics. There's such a long list, I, I would be here all day. I was a little intimidated with a 40 watt laser because it is so powerful and I, you know, I had all the scary things in my head like, oh, I'm gonna start a fire, it's gonna stink up my whole place, my neighbors are gonna, you know, get me in trouble. And it none of that happened. It was so easy with the fume extractor. All the fumes were able to be filtered through and there were no particles in the air, nothing like that. I am located very close to the balcony, so I did keep the window open, but you can, if you're in a house, for example, you can exhaust it just straight out the window, which is another option. But having the fume extractor plus ventilation going has been a great advantage of keeping the airflow and not having that built up smell. When I was engraving some wood, you just have that like toasty scent that comes out of the fume extractor. It's kind of like a campfire, but nothing too potent that, you know, someone's going to think that there's a fire or anything like that. Um, it's very light and it wasn't bugging me at all. So it does depend on how much you are cutting and engraving as well as the thickness. So the more it has to cut through, perhaps the more scent, I'm assuming. So just be mindful of that. And I would say probably the best thing to do is have a fan going, exhaust it outside or have the fume extractor and just practice safe protocols within your studio or your home. And the last feature I would say is creative potential. There is unlimited things you can do with this machine. I'm just scraping the surface of the capabilities throughout this year. I'm going to be trying out new ideas and new projects and stuff like that, taking you guys along with me. I see myself engraving my pottery. I see myself engraving gifts for weddings, for my friends, family, but for now, I'm just gonna take you through the basics. Throughout the year, we'll get into more crafty projects using this machine. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to take a moment to just show you how easy it is to get your first cut or engrave going. I'm just using the piece of wood that came with the machine for calibration. After calibration, I decided to utilize it for some projects, but I literally dragged and drop an SVG file, selected it, selected the cut function. There's also the line engrave and the fill engrave. So you just choose what you want. You can alter the speed as well as the power of the laser. You can change the scaling. You can array, offset, 
And then once you have the image lined up to where you want it, you can autofocus, which at this point, the laser head will move to the center of your object and determine the thickness. Like I said before, make sure that if you have varying thicknesses, you measure from the highest one. From there, after your autofocus, you can literally press start and you're all ready to go. The laser does its thing and it's such a quick and easy process. I love the final product of these earrings. It was so quick and easy to make and if you were wondering, the backings and all the supplies for the earrings were a set that I bought on Amazon and I've been able to make so many different pairs of earrings. It was so worth it. I think it was around $20. I'll put that in my Amazon storefront linked in the description. So I'm doing this again. It's the same process. I'm doing two different earrings, but as you can see, you can rotate, you can scale up, scale down, make some alterations. And here I'm just doing the same thing. I'm plotting it on the piece of wood. I forgot to mention on the right side, you can choose your material. So here I chose the basswood three millimeter because that's what it came with, but there's so many different options. I also engraved some dog tags, which are metal. So you can select the metal and select the thickness. It was so easy. It kind of determines the speed and the power of the laser. It kind of changes dependent on your material, but then you can further do some alterations if you find that the power is too much or too little or you want to emphasize the engraving a little bit. It's encouraged to do some tests to find out the intensity that you like and you can just go from there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions at all, like I said, please leave it in the comments because the next video I'm going to be answering the questions, putting some things to the test, maybe grabbing some acrylic, trying new things, and testing out the rotary tool, so stay tuned. Bye!